I would like to welcome you to the conference of the Global Apparel Sourcing Expo, organized by the IAF and its partners, Four Source and Sourcing Journal. My name is Matthijs Kite. I'm Secretary General of the IAF. The IAF is the International Apparel Federation, a global body uniting industry associations from the apparel industry, uh, companies, um, supplying companies, the whole uh, ecosystem of the global apparel industry. Now, this conference that we're organizing that is part of the Global uh, Sourcing Expo is focusing on a number of topics that are crucial to our industry today and tomorrow. Sustainability, digitization, sourcing trends also in relation to COVID-19, innovation, um, and right now we are focusing on probably the most important topic of them all right now, digiti digitization. And we are really lucky to have with us here a pioneer uh, and a very important key company, I would say, in, uh, in the process of the digitization of the apparel industry. We have with us for this session Martin Zensch, the managing director of Vizu. Vizu the company that provides the solutions to digitize materials. A very important step, as I said, in uh, the digi digitization of the processes of product development uh, in uh, our industry. So without further ado, I would like to now give the floor, the digital floor to, uh, to Martin Zemsch. Thank you, Matthijs, for, uh, um, for the introduction. So, I would like to uh, give a talk today about U3M, which is the first op open source 3D material format um, in the apparel industry. Uh, maybe just a couple of words about, about us as a company, Visu and, and myself. So my name is Martin Zemsch. I'm managing director and co-founder of the company of Visu. Um, like Matthijs already said, we provide um, software and hardware to digitize physical material samples. Um, we exist since uh, since 2013 and where, where the idea actually came from, so but why are we actually doing this? Uh, both me and my co-founding partner, we used to work at the sportswear brand uh, Adidas in Germany. It's already back in 2009. And I would say Adidas has been a pioneer when it comes to 3D uh, product development and design. So basically, they, they've been doing that since the years of 2000. And specifically, our task uh, during our work there was to digitize material samples. Only that during that time, there wasn't really a scalable industrial solution to do that. So everything um, was manual effort using tools like Photoshop um, and other tools. So basically, that, that worked for a time. But, uh, but after a while, we quickly realized the problem is uh, we cannot produce materials fast enough, so it wasn't really scalable. The quality um, wasn't good enough, so you needed really an expert in 3D to create like a good 3D material from a physical, um, physical sample if you don't have the right tools. And also there was no consistency uh, due to the sheer amount of user input you had during the creation. Um, depending on your mood during the day, your, your end result might be good or bad. So, um, long story short, in 2010, we were looking for ways of automating that, of making it um, ready for industrial use, of uh, making it scalable. And that's actually where the first prototype of our current scanner was created. And, and that worked for the sportswear brand. So, basically, they started using it. It wasn't really a product yet. It was just like a prototype. There wasn't really a software around it, but it already produced good results. And therefore, for them, the project was also um, finished. Me and my partner at that time, we saw more potential and we um, sort of really wanted to create a nice product out of it. So in end of 2013, we decided to found the company of Visu. Um, since then, we had a very long um, road. <laughs> Uh, behind us already, but today um, our technology is used in over 30 countries all over the world and um, in at least uh, 100 plus big apparel brands. 
So, but Visu is not the topic that I'm going to talk about today. Um, it's actually U3M, a 3D material format. And to preface this, I would just give, uh, like to give a little bit introduction um, in sort of the terms. So a 3D material, you can sort of imagine it consisting on the one hand of the visual properties, which can be the color, the reflectance, the structure, um, and how transparent it is. But also um, there's the physical properties, like how much does it um, bend, stretch, its thickness, its weight, and that is typically used to simulate um, to simulate a material in a 3D environment. And put together both the visual and the physical properties, you receive your digital twin um, of your physical sample. So um, that sounds all very nice, but at least two years ago, the main problem was um, the lack of interoperability. So there's multiple um, multiple applications out there, and these are just a few. Um, so don't be mad at me if uh, I don't I didn't list you there, but there are dozens um, uh, dozens of uh, vendors in that in that specific field that either provide. Um, visual measurement solution, physical measurement solution, um, simulation tools, or rendering the images, displaying the images in the end, the 3D materials, or managing them. So and the problem now is um, they are not, or at least not all of them are compatible with each other. So you might have one, um, one physical measurement device that is used to get the physical, uh, the physical simulation data, but that will only work with a single um, single application in the end, and the same for the visual. And some might uh, some are able to put them together, like visual and physical, in one proprietary format. But that's then also only applicable in one application. So you already see where the problem is. Um, once a company uses more than one or two of these applications, it becomes very difficult of handling that. Um, handling that data or managing the data and also for all the management system they would have to support all these proprietary um, proprietary tools so um, but still uh, everybody at this point realizes 3d is not going away so 3d is something that is going to come digitization in general of course um, so and that is why in 2017 at a and at the PI Apparel in Berlin, there was a panel of 3D CAD vendors, and they've been confronted by the industry um, with their need to really align on digital materials because it's um, it's been a struggle till um, till then. It's, and it's one of the biggest problems right now that's holding back the industry of um, scaling 3D and also bring a digitizing the uh, material supply chain. Because you can very easily imagine if you have one material supplier that has multiple custom customers that use multiple of these applications, they also would need multiple um, visual measurement solutions, multiple physical measurement solution, multiple materials um, in their formats, in the specific formats, um, to supply all their customers, proper, customers properly with 3D materials. So in the end, it's not, it's not really feasible anymore. So during that panel, um, yeah, they've really been confronted with that. And luckily, as a solution in 2018, um, we announced the launch of U3M as an answer to that request coming from the industry. Because also for us, um, it's, it's a bottleneck because it's holding the industry back of going digital as a whole. So of course, and that also damages us as a company in the end. And we, at that point, we needed a new format um, anyway. So we put, uh, we discussed that with another um, 3D simulation provider, Browseware. They've basically been in the same in the same boat as we at that time. They also had to create a new format anyway. And then we just said, why why don't we do it together? And why don't we do it open source so other people can use it as well? So that was the launch of the unified 3D material in 2018. At that point, um, the, the openness was just the visual part. So that was open to everybody who wanted to implement it. But the physical part, unfortunately, was still proprietary because, um, and the main reason for that is 
that the measurement devices had been proprietary um, to that end. So every 3D simulation tool also had their um, proprietary measurement device to create their proprietary physical measurements. <laughs> but at least it was the um, it was the first step towards uh, yeah towards a scalable 3D format. So um, of course the launch brands loved it, 3D vendors uh, initially not so much, but luckily after after lots of talks, lot of lots of discussions, video calls. Um, now, roughly two years later, there's already 20 plus um, supporting softwares and platforms um, that can now either read or write or load via plugin um, the U3M format. So it's a very important first step um, towards creating this. And I would say this is something that has not been, um, never been there before. So, and even more excitingly now, this year, two years later, after the original um, launch of the U3M 1.0, we announced the launch of U3M 1.1. And the big change here is that uh, working together with the company Browsefair, they opened up their um, physical measurement device, their fabric analyzer, and public publicized the uh, um, data at output. So now with U3 and 1.1 that can be read directly from the format by every application um, that wants to. So that's a real, um, that's actually a real game changer. That's the first, um, that's the first time that's been possible. So in effect, that means now you can um, use these two devices to create a material format with an open source documentation that potentially every application out there can read. It's the first step towards, um, and the most important step towards digital twin um, of a fabric sample, I would say. So of course, this is um, this is by far not the end. Um, there's a lot further discussions we are currently having um, with important people from the industry like UVH, Hugo Boss, Adidas, Lidl, Assist, Visu, Browser, Optitex, Glow3D, and many more um, to bring that topic even further to sort of really um, drive that towards the, I would say, the material standards throughout the industry for the supply chain to really be able to um, digitize the whole supply chain. So the Um, so that way we can also work with more applications um, to adapt that format because in the end it only makes sense if really everybody is in the same boat and we don't have to rely on like individual solutions anymore. Um, but if clients can simply say we have that one material format that we can create and that is also going to work in every application that I use in my 3D environment um, without having uh, needing custom solution again. Thank you. That was uh, that was my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Martin. That that was really interesting. And I have to say, for anybody working for a, a association or a federation, as I am, um, you know, the topic of uh, harmonization is is highly interesting and very um, uh, very important because um, you know this is all uh, has the potential all of this technology to make processes more smooth uh, and then it would be such a pity um, if because of many different standards uh, in the end the processes are less smooth <laughs> than they uh, yeah. than they were before and and it's an organizational question and 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 uh, uh, a question of reaching an agreement, um, and it's fantastic that you've uh, that you've done so much uh, work on that uh, on that already. Um, and and what we really have to avoid as an entire industry is that you get different ecosystems that that cannot communicate, and you get manufacturers that uh, that, that have a big barrier to work with one client or another, and. Uh, uh, so it's it's wonderful. I, I, I'm sure some of the listeners 
haven't even realized how much has already been uh, been done uh, on on the area of uh, of, of up scanning and uh, and let alone that they realize how much work also has already been done on standardizing this. So that's uh, that's good to hear. Um, so, so on that on that, on that, on that question of uh, standardization, is, is this U3M competing with any other uh, would-be global standard? Or are you seeing that? So, um, good question. So basically, uh, I would say no. When we decided to launch U3M back in 2018, we didn't really do that um, because we thought, oh, this could be like a great product. We want to make a huge profit with, with it. Um, we actually did that because there was no other solution at that time that really fulfilled these needs. And I think these needs are on the one hand to be open source um, because you cannot really build up that digital supply chain and rely on one format that belongs to one company because then you're 100% reliable on where this company moves. And there are already other open source formats, but um, on that side, they do not address a pair of specific needs, mm. which is like the physical measurements, um, which is like meter data in regards to that fabric, which is like its thickness, composition, construction, and combining this together with the three with the visual 3D part. So um, had there been another solution out there, or would there be a, even if today if there was like a perfect solution that's already more advanced than um, U3M, I would say, okay, guys, let's let's go um, adopt this one because it's so much better. But in my honest opinion, I don't think um, there is something else right now that really makes sense. So we would really like to push that um, forward together with right. the industry. Yeah, and I think that's the best approach also for uh, organizations, federations, uh, for the industry itself to recognize that at some point when there is a standard and there's not really any competitors, this is far advanced, then the best option is to all back uh, that uh, that standard as quickly as possible uh, to work on that. So now that will be the topic of uh, future conversations, uh, I think. Um, so... How would that work practically if listeners now, if, if companies say, OK, so uh, how can we work with, uh, how can we participate and how can we work with the U3M? So, um, like I said, U3M is, is completely open source. You can look it up on GitHub. You can actually scroll through the whole documentation. And um, if you're like a 3D application and try to implement that, and of course, if you have any questions, um, just get back to us. If you're like a brand or supplier and have specific requirements, needs, um, I just want to like follow the current uh, the current developments of U3M and U3M 1.1. Also, just feel free to reach out to us. Like you saw, we have um, regular workshops regarding the topic, especially before um, new newer features, like with all these brands and all these suppliers. And I also think the more people um, participate, the better this format is also going to be because that way we can consolidate on all the um, requirements and work on something that really is beneficial to everybody and fulfills the needs of everybody as well. Okay, yeah, thanks uh, Thanks a lot for that. And uh, I, I hope this does grow fast because we need uh, we need fast consolidation to, uh, to, uh, to work further. Um, so, also in view of the time, um, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Martin, for uh, for this highly interesting uh, presentation. Um, I'm sure we will be in touch later, as you will be with many of the listeners um, to this uh, uh, to this session. And um, I look forward to that uh, to, uh, to to meeting again. I wish you uh, best of luck with the, with the growth of your of your company. Thank, thank you for having me, Martin. <laughs> Perfect. And I look forward to, um, like I said, if you have any questions to all the listeners out there about this, uh, feel free to reach out. Great. Okay.